My name is Eric Hansen and I own a company, Competitive Lawn Service, and for the last three years we've been running equipment and trucks on propane. So we've been really focusing on this uh, propane technology uh, very heavily because we wanted to choose a single source of fuel that we could run everything on. And uh, we initially started out with two lawnmowers three years ago. Uh, since then we've added two more trucks. Uh, the most recent one here uh, comes in and actually it's fitted up with a snowplow. Uh, front to it, so we'll actually be the first company in on the planet actually to be doing alternative uh, snow and ice management. So that'll be interesting too. So, um, what do you think about running trucks, let's say, on propane? Sure. So the Chicago area Clean Cities Coalition is part of the national U.S. Department of Energy's Clean Cities program, which encourages the use of alternative fuels and advanced vehicle technologies in the transportation sector to reduce the U.S.'s dependence on oil. Um, propane, since the 1992 Energy Policy Act, is recognized as a alternative fuel. Um, it's a cleaner burning fuel. It is nine, over 90 percent produced uh, locally, and by locally I mean within the U.S. Um, the Chicago area clean cities definitely encourages the use of propane and all other fuels that reduce our dependence on foreign and domestic oil um, to help improve local air quality and to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Have you seen these yet? No, I haven't. This is okay. the first time we've been able to see What do you think them. about this? It's a great idea. Um, I know that there are other, you know, there's companies out there that are converting their equipment to run on um, propane and, you know, to use one of the one gallon cylinders and then have to dispose of it or recycle of it is pretty wasteful. You're not, you know, if your mission is to improve the environment and then you're throwing out away all of these canisters, um, it's kind of counterproductive. <laughs> what do you think about some of the things that we're doing, like the, the smaller things, the equipment and things like that? I mean, that's that's very innovative. Typically, um, you know, your landscape equipment, your smaller engine equipment is typically very dirty and, and um, produces a lot of particulates and other emissions that are harmful um, to air quality. The Chicago area is in the non-attainment area for particulate matter and ozone, um, and two of the emissions from this, these equipment Lead to the lead to creating those uh, pollutants. So, alternatives that are um, zero emissions or lower emissions are definitely encouraged. And you've been a local leader um, here with switching over your fuel, and it's, uh, hopefully others will learn from that and also take on the mission. Can you discuss, or do you know anything about uh, the 2012 regulations? I know that the U.S. EPA, um, they actually um, regulate the emissions from equipment and vehicles and they, they are rolling out some um, emission standards for equipment, but still um, that's in 2012 and you've, you've taken uh, you know, your legacy fleet and are converting it to run on cleaner burning propane. Okay, wait a second. By 2012, all the equipment that we have, the trimmers that I love using and the blowers that I love using with the two-stroke uh, oil and everything, gas oil mix, are going to be obsolete, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we do about that? Going from one traditional fuel to an alternative it can, can be difficult and I think that that's a reason why a lot of people don't make the switch. So can you, can you comment on some of the challenges that you've experienced? If you ask my wife, okay, <laughs> why I'm doing this and why it's been three years of doing this, it's insane, okay? I should have quit, I don't know, four months into it or whatever, okay? Currently we're sitting on an EPA spill site. Okay, so directly underneath us there's bacteria that are injected into the soil and this used to be a bulk oil fuel facility. Now the reason we haven't been able to upgrade this or change around our building set or anything like that is because we can't. We can't touch the soil until we actually get it cleaned up. So, and the reason that it uh, is dirty is because of the fact that um, it had above ground and below ground diesel and gasoline tanks. Well, big issue. This propane tank on the other hand came in like seven or eight months ago. It took us six months through the municipality to be able to get it in. So we fought hard. Uh, we were able to get it in. We've got all kinds of explosion proof switches and we had to go through all kinds of things and we've got a big pad we had to put in so it cost us tons of money to get the thing done. However, we were able to get it done. The great thing about this tank and fill station is that there's no issue with us spilling it. Okay, propane's an evaporative. So after we're done with this location, we have the propane tank, we empty it, we take it off the site and there's absolutely no spilling or anything. Once I'm able to get rid of every single piece of equipment that runs on diesel and runs on all these other things, I'm done. Mm -hmm. So that was a big issue in trying to work around EPA param parameters, municipalities, all kinds of things like that in order to get the tanks uh, in. That was one thing. 
Uh, second thing is, none of the manufacturers, Roush is a great partner because for, for the uh, trucks, as mm -hmm. you know, and you have other um, municipalities and things like that right. that are going with these right. trucks, they're going to sell a ton more trucks into Illinois or whatever for that. And they're a great partner to have because they stand behind the, uh, uh, the OEM products that they do. They go through a lot with the EPA. They've received a lot of um, uh, a lot of grant funding and everything to get the EPA approvals on doing the retrofits. <laughs> it took forever to even get the retrofits to actually work well. Mm -hmm. And we're backyard mechanicing this at this point in time. We don't want to be doing that. I want to be able to go to the store and buy this. Mm -hmm. The manufacturers are saying, oh, it doesn't work very well. I'm telling you, it works great. All I need is it in the market in order to do that. They're telling me I can't fuel it. Well, I'm I'm telling you, I can. I got it right here. So if there's manufacturers out there, they'll step up to the plate, support their stuff, put it in, and over time be able to keep that in there. That's what we're looking for. Is that a long question? That was a long answer. No, that was fantastic. I heard you know <laughs> co code issues and regulation you know, regulations that are impeding progress and support from manufacturers. I appreciate you coming out here and talking about this or whatever. Uh, we'll keep forging forward, and again, we're going to be working with. Uh, uh, with your group and other groups across the state or whatever to kind of uh, uh, bring this out. We're hoping that uh, more companies will definitely jump onto this because it is available. Uh, it, it is something that, uh, that is a viable solution for this.